Hey guys, Ivan here, and it's been a couple of days since the Mr. Olympia, and in this video, we got a couple of very interesting stories. So the first one is about Hari Chopin, who just posted this physique update video. I'm gonna play it in a moment, until then you can admire this quarter turn of Hari, which is insane. I don't know when this video was taken. Was this before the Mr. Olympia, or maybe after the Mr. Olympia? It kind of looks like it is right now, after Mr. Olympia, because he looks fuller, you're gonna see in a second. But the caption here is interesting, so he says, in English, actually, this time the caption is not in Farsi, he probably used Google Translate to translate this, so it doesn't really, it's not really clear what he's trying to say, but as you can see, he says, uh, keep it as a memory and write it in a memory book. This wolf was wounded and has left silence. Just wait for the comeback. See you soon. And he tags Mr. Olympia LLC. So yeah, this means that Hari Japan is coming back next year. He already posted a story about this. And now we can also see it right here. He's coming back to the Mr. Olympia title. All right, now let's take a look at the video. So as you can see in this quarter turn, <laughs> he looks just silly. He just looks insane. Now, as far as the back poses, I think here he does look a little bit sharper in the glutes than he did on stage. Overall, I think his back improved from previous years, and I think he was more conditioned this year than Mr. Olympia than he was in the years before he won the Mr. Olympia, but I think this year there was an improvement. However, I don't know if on stage he looked full like he looks here. I mean, look at this. I mean, maybe it's just the lighting, maybe there is a filter, or maybe this is filmed after he had a cheat day or a refi day, and he looks like this in the gym, but he wouldn't look this sharp on the stage. But, I mean, I don't know about that, because, I mean, look at the striation everywhere. Like, on the glutes, on the back, I mean, on, on the legs, abs, chest, everything is super separated and super freaking dense and thick. Again, it's really hard to believe that this, this physique is not the best in the world. Now, everybody believes, I would say general consensus is that Hadi deserved to win the Mr. Olympia, that he looked better than Derek Lansford and Samson Dauda, that he did enough to defend his title, and that is what majority of the people believe. You can see it everywhere, in the comments on social media, you can hear it in interviews with important people in bodybuilding, everybody pretty much believes that Hadi did enough to remain the Mr. Olympia champion, and if you ask me, as I said before, it's really hard to grasp that this physique right here lost three days ago. It's hard to believe that this is not the best bodybuilder in the world, but only second best. Did I see it play out this way when I was watching the pre-judging, when I was watching all the high-quality videos and the photos and everything? No. No, I didn't see it that way, you guys know that, but am I upset about this outcome? Do I think there was a robbery? I would say no, I would say I'm okay with this result. Now, like I said, if Hadi looked on the Mr. Olympia stage like he looked in this video, and now maybe I'm mistaken, maybe again it's the lighting, the angle, the, the cheat meal pump, something like that, but in that video, to me, he looks fuller and bigger. And on the stage, I don't think he was as big and as full as he was last year. And Derek, he did improve a lot. Like, he came in much bigger and he was really shredded from behind. He literally brought third best back double bicep of all time. You know, Ronnie Coleman, Phil hit, and then I would say Derek Lansford. I think he beats Dorian Yates in this pose. So we have third best back double bicep in the history of bodybuilding. And, you know, that's one of the most important poses. Like, you can't really hide anything in this pose. From the back, you can see everything. And it looked insane. It looked better than Hadi. And Hadi, I don't think he was as shredded as he knows how to be. I think he was more conditioned than last year. But years before that, before he won the Mr. Olympia, he was bringing more shredded glutes. And here it wasn't really the case. I think I'll make a video in which I will do an analysis of this top two right here. We'll compare all the poses and see what exactly happened, what went down. But my overall impression is that this is a fine decision, that I'm okay with it. I didn't see it coming, but I'm okay with it. I don't think it's a horrible decision. I don't think there is an obvious robbery. I thought it was really close between all three guys. And I'm fine with Derek taking it, especially if you consider the fact that he is a great ambassador. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. 
You guys remember that photo of Samson that Milos Archev posted hours before the pre-judging and he looked really shredded in that one? So the other photos that were taken at the same moment are posted and here they are, here is one of them in which he flexed more, harder and as you can see, like he looks phenomenal, man, I mean look at the size of those legs, the roundness and then the waist size and then the shoulder width and the shoulder pop, I mean the round shoulders, the round triceps and that small tiny waist, man, this is just like Milo Sharto says, hashtag bodybuilding. I believe this guy is gonna become the Mr. Olympia, I mean it's really gonna be hard to dethrone Derek Lancer now after he got up there, they will love him, they will want him to stay up there, but Samson would also make a great ambassador, however I think if he wants to beat Derek he needs to knock him out, and Derek is young, he is young and up and coming, and I know he's gonna be improving, he's gonna be improving his overall muscularity and conditioning, and Samson, like, I don't think he needs to come in any, any bigger. I think he only needs to work on his conditioning. Now, like I said, in these photos, he looked shredded. And as far as I know, these photos are from 5-6 days, let's say a week out of Mr. Olympia. And when I was watching the live stream, it seemed like he wasn't in this kind of condition. So, what could have went wrong? Or did anything really go wrong? The answer is live stream. Live stream went wrong. I mean, for $75, you would expect an HD quality of the video, but don't even get me started about that. And at one point, there was 10,000 people watching the live stream. And that's almost a million dollars from the live stream, you know, $750,000. That's a lot. Arnold Classic is going to be doing the live stream for free. And if Mr. Olympia wants to charge it, at least give us an HD quality footage, because take a look at this video. This was filmed by someone's camera, phone camera, and it's so much better than the live stream. And here you can see that Samson actually wasn't in such a bad condition, not as bad as it seemed on the live stream. I mean, this also means that the other guys were in better conditioning than it seemed, but it also means that Samson wasn't really off. Does he need to be leaner? Absolutely, he absolutely does. It seems like the judges are holding him to a higher standard. They won't reward him unless he is peeled. And even though the live stream was so bad, you could see glute striations on Derek, you could see hamstring separation, you could see dryness in the back and everywhere. So Samson, if he wants to win this title, he needs to come in shredded, peeled. Now we come to the interesting part, the question of why didn't he come in peeled at this show? At the Arnold Classic, he was in decent shape, and I thought he was going to improve. Once again, because he improved his conditioning for every show so far, and I thought he was going to be shredded at Mr. Olympia. So what went wrong? Well, Milo Sharchev explains. Samson, he needs more size, so that he can come in shrink-wrapped and still have enough muscle. But I think that we all agree that uh, Samson has enough size. I mean, he was... You know how uh, I could never... Why was, well, you were his coach. Why wasn't he lean enough then? You know, uh, put it this way. He's, he's uh, uh, dieting super, super hard. And, uh, you know, uh, that, that's as far as he could go. What's you know? That's as far as he can go? Uh, uh, he, he did 16 uh, weeks of dieting, very, very strict, very low carbs. You know, and, and uh, you know, this is what show was coming. All right, that was very interesting to hear. So on RX Muscle, Dave Palombo interviewed Milos Sharchev, who is coaching Samson Dauda, and he asked him why, why Samson wasn't in shape. You're his coach, why? And Milos's answer was, this is as far as he can go. He did 16 weeks of extreme dieting, and this is as far as his conditioning can go. Does that make sense? I mean, I don't know, like, I, I am not a 300-pound bodybuilder, I never worked with a mass monster, this is basically an unknown territory, not just for me, but for every coach, these guys are not human, I mean, there are massive bodybuilders who get shredded easily, who also don't lose size and fullness, and they get shredded so easily, there are bodybuilders like that, but some of them are tricky to figure out, I mean, I don't know this from experience, this is from what I'm hearing on all kinds of bodybuilding podcasts and so on. So I think it is the same thing with Samson Dauda. It's hard to figure him out. It's not like they were... I mean, maybe you could say they were late. Maybe if he was doing uh, 20, 25 weeks of dieting, maybe he would be shredded. 
I mean, he was 300 pounds right here. I don't think he would look bad at like 290 or 285. So maybe a longer diet would be the answer. But I don't know. I'm sure Milos Archer will figure it out. And also you would probably wonder that maybe he spilled over in the peak week. And that's not the answer because listen to this. I saw some pictures that you had leaked out. He looked pretty good a week ago. Yeah, I mean, uh, he looks similar. Did yeah. you fill him up too much? No. I mean, uh, I, I can tell you what... He, uh, probably less, uh, probably less, uh, I guarantee you, probably less than anybody on stage. Yeah. He was, really? He was, uh, okay, two cups of rice uh, per meal, and there was uh, uh, three meals on, on Wednesday, three, five meals on Friday, uh, Thursday, and uh, uh, five meals on Friday. 90 grams of carbs, so two right. cups. Yeah. You know, seriously. Yeah, this is how it is. That's what people think that, oh, I cover him up. It was already a plan to go uh, lower cars because he's full, he's big. He was going to be biggest on stage anyway, so why, why try to go for the size? All right, this is definitely unexpected. So basically, Samson had only 350 grams of carbs on Wednesday and he had 450 grams of carbs on Thursday and Friday, the day of the show. And that was it. That is all. I mean, knowing Milo Sharchev and his crazy insulin protocols, you would expect that Samson here was blasting full. And he did look blasting full. He looked like he spilled over a little, but no. No, apparently that's not the case. Milos did not overcarb Samson Dauda. Even though you guys probably know the story when he talks about carving up a Dennis Wolf for 2007 Mr. Olympia with 5,000 grams of carbs. And Samson Dauda and Dennis Wolf kind of look alike. I mean, they're both taller guys, really big, really massive. But it doesn't really matter. The size doesn't really matter when it comes to utilizing carbs. Some guys need more, some guys need less. Big Ramy also. Chad Nichols talked about this. He needed, he needed very, very little carbs to carb up. And apparently, it is the case with Samson too. So guys, 450 grams of carbs per day. And on Wednesday also 350, that's nothing, like I'm carving up on way more than that. So I guess the size of a bodybuilder doesn't really matter when it comes to carving up. I mean, there are freaks, like for example Roman Fritz, who are carving up on like freaking 10,000 grams of carbs. And there are guys like, for example, Big Ramy, who literally never go flat and they carb up on 300 grams of carbs and that's it, they're full. So I guess what Chris Asito is saying is absolutely true about coaching. He says there are two rules in coaching in bodybuilding. The first rule is there are no rules. And the second rule is look at the rule number one. And you can definitely see it here in this example. So this explains uh, why Samson was off with conditioning, let's put it that way. It's because he simply didn't diet for a longer time. <laughs> I mean, I guess. Or because his body doesn't want to go past this point. We will find out in the future and hopefully next year this is not going to be the case. Samson is going to come in peeled and if he does, I think he can win the Mr. Olympia. But we'll see, it's going to be a very interesting year. Alright, next I wanted to talk about Michal Krizo for a moment because this guy is one of my favorite bodybuilders on that Mr. Olympia stage. Partly because he is from around here, he's from Slovakia, very close to my country. And also because I think he's an awesome guy. I mean, what he's showing on social media, he seems very genuine. He seems very chill. He seems like he's not taking himself or bodybuilding too seriously. He's just joking around all the time. He's so positive and, you know, I like him as a person. So I want to see him do well. And he did prove to be a really good bodybuilder, to be a top bodybuilder. He did place seventh, guys. Top seven in the world is an amazing achievement. But even though it is an amazing achievement, he could have placed higher than that. I mean, he was in the second callout. He could have beaten, if you ask me, Andrew Jack, Brandon Curry, Hunter Labrada. I think it was close between those four guys. And Michal was more conditioned than them, like a lot more conditioned. Maybe Hunter was able to match this kind of detail, but not really. Nobody was this dry, this sharp, from behind especially. So I could have seen him placing fourth. I believe the main reason why he didn't place higher is because he's a new guy, he's a new name. He needs to, you know, work his way through the ranks. I mean, there were guys like Hunter Labrada, whose father is Lil Labrada. There was Andrew Jack, the star, basically, in the world right now. And Brandon Curry, former Mr. Olympia. It's gonna be really hard to give Grigio a spot ahead of these three names. But in the future, I think he can surpass all three of them. 
We'll see. Maybe not Andrew Jack. If he keeps improving, it's gonna be hard to beat him. But Brandon and Hunter, yeah, I think Michal is better than them. He has more potential than them at this point. I'll probably do a little analysis also of the second callout so we can see who actually won that callout. Was it really uh, based on the based off the name or was it fair? Was the judging really good? We're gonna see that. I'm gonna make a video so sometime soon. But there was also this funny interview <laughs> that is circling around the internet right now and I was laughing so hard at it. And even if you saw it already, I'm sure it's gonna be funny for you to hear it again. So let me play it for you once again. Now, do you live here in the U.S. or where do you live? Uh, uh, where do you live? Uh, in uh, Monday, Tuesday, in Tuesday. So what happened here is that he simply didn't hear what she said. And when he asks her to repeat, she moves the microphone closer to his ear. What the hell was happening here in this interview? And yeah, I know his English is not perfect, but he just misheard her. He thought she said, when do you live? Instead of, where do you live? And that's it, that's what happened, but it was funny, for sure. Anyways, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, like it. If you wanna see more bodybuilding videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon, all the best, and bye-bye.